In this video, we are going to find out that how different things move in and out of the cell. So basically, we are going to talk about movement of molecules inside and outside the cell. So let's start. There are basically three types of movements. First is diffusion. You might have heard of this term in your chemistry. Then we have osmosis and the third one is active transport. In the examination, they ask you to differentiate between these three types of movements and they also want to know that what is the role of concentration gradient in all these types of movements. Okay, so let's start with the very first type. You can see that how we are drawing the arrow downwards in the first two and in the third, the arrow is moving upwards, which means that the upward, the downward arrow represents that it is towards the concentration gradient, whereas the upward arrow represents against the concentration gradient. Let me explain this with the help of an example. For example, you can see in the diffusion, the molecules are moving from a highly concentrated area to a lower to a lower concentrated area where there are less number of molecules. But if we talk about osmosis, we can see that in this beaker, if we separate it with the cell membrane, or you can say a partially permeable membrane, which is having certain holes in between it, how the movement takes place. You can see on the right side, there are more number of red dots, which are representing a very small molecule, whereas the left side is representing high, higher water potential. So for water, we use water potential. For the other molecules, we use concentration. Okay, so you need to be very careful in using these terms. Here, the water will move from the lower water potential to higher water potential, whereas the molecules which you can see here, they are larger in size, so they cannot cross the cell membrane. If we are having this cell membrane in our body or in our cells, so the osmosis takes place generally. I'm drawing the, dis the explanatory structure of a cell membrane here in the active transport. Here you can see that there are certain uh, transport proteins present in it. These transport proteins, they let the gate open for certain molecules to pass with the help of energy. So when ATP converts into ADP, energy is released and then molecules can pass through it. This movement takes place against the concentration gradient and the energy that comes from respiration. So we are clear with this thing that Active transport is against the concentration gradient and it needs energy. Let's talk about the factors that affect diffusion. The first factor is temperature. When we increase the temperature, there will be more diffusion. When we increase the surface area, there will be effective diffusion. And then distance. For example, let me explain it with the help of uh, this root hair cell. You can see that the surface area of the root hair cell is more, so there is effective diffusion that takes place. The distance of the uh, outside and inside the cell is very less because it is uh, surrounded by one cell thick membrane. So it allows, again, effective diffusion. There is another example of diffusion in our respiratory system. We can say alveoli is the perfect explained example of diffusion in which alveoli is surrounded by a capillary. The blood capillary exchange carbon dioxide and oxygen by simple diffusion. Carbon dioxide is diffused out whereas oxygen is diffused in. So this is again a very explanatory example of diffusion. Let's understand the concept of osmosis with the help of some living cells. We are going to talk about two types of cells, one from the plant and one from the animal cell. We are going to take three beakers. In first beaker, we have, we have added solute molecules and in the second, we have added same amount of solute and same amount of solvent molecules. And in the last beaker, we have added more amount of, uh, you can say, solute molecules and there are going to be less amount of solvent molecules, okay? So first beaker, we have the solute molecules in 
less quantity and in the last beaker solute molecules are more. Now let's try to put these cells in it. First we are taking a plant cell and then we are taking a red blood cell. For the red blood cell when we put it into a solution which is called as a hypotonic solution in which there is more amount of solvent and less amount of solute what is going to happen that uh, the animal cell in the solution with the high water potential, its cytoplasm has lower water potential now. So the water will enter by osmosis and the animal cell will swell and even it will burst. Whereas for the plant cell, when the uh, water is entering in it, it enters by osmosis. The vacuole increases in the size and pushes the cell contents against the cell wall. The cell wall is strong and it is really relatively inelastic it prevents over expansion of the cell by exerting an opposing pressure as the water enters the cell when a plant cell expands it becomes swollen or this term is called as turgidity so the cell does not burst because it is protected by the cell wall and the pressure exerted by the water on the cell wall is called as turgor pressure whereas in the second one you can see there is no change takes place we call it as an isotonic solution in the third one we can see that the cell has shrink both the plant and the animal cell, they both have strength which is called as plasmolysis in which water leaves the cell and the cytoplasm shrinks away from the cell and the cell plasmolysis. So the shrinkage of cytoplasm and the cell membrane away from the cell wall, this whole process is again called as plasmolysis. We are now going to discuss a very important example of active transport, how active transport takes place in the plant root hair cell and the villi. In plant root hair cell, the nitrates, they want to enter the plant root hair cell and they are having higher concentration inside and lower concentration outside. So this movement takes place by active transport, whereas in villi, the active transport of fatty acids, glycerol, and amino acids and sometimes glucose also takes place by active transport where the molecules have to enter in the blood against the concentration gradient and where energy is required. So this is all about all these three types of transport systems. Thank you so much. Please, please, please like the video and subscribe the channel.